Alleged ghost sightings and paranormal experiences are a commonplace occurrence across the heartland of the United States. However, these stories of unmoored spirits aren't just old wives' tales and urban legends. They're far more common than you'd think. Almost every state has a horrifying story that its inhabitants are certain is true. Today on Graveyard Shift, we're looking at the 50 most haunted locations from each state. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to Graveyard Shift to stay up to date on all your horror needs. A purported 47 men have perished in the sloss furnaces of Birmingham, Alabama due to cruel and inhumane working conditions. Their spirits are said to be seen wandering the stairwells late at night, and their screams for help can be heard to this day. Kennecott, Alaska was once a booming mining town with a robust economy that lasted from 1911 to 1938. However, it has been completely abandoned since 1950. The town was previously kept afloat by a highly profitable copper mine, but today, those memories are long gone, the only remnants being the rumored sightings of dead railway workers and miners. The Lost Dutchman Gold Mine is a fabled mine that houses millions of dollars worth of gold. The only issue being that no one truly knows where it is. The local legends say it's somewhere near Apache Junction, Arizona. Today, the only thing certain about Apache Junction is that it's home to some of the most haunted land in the country. Seeing the spirits of those who died searching for gold is reportedly quite common. The Crescent Hotel in Arkansas is so haunted that the residents have made an entire business out of it. The hotel is primarily known for the spirit called the Girl in the Mist. However, numerous other paranormal sightings have been reported on the hotel's grounds. Bodie, California is a former ghost town that has since been turned into a state park. Many of the town's original houses and structures are still standing, but those aren't the only remnants of the past that still occupy this space. The town is believed to still house numerous long-dead former residents, even now, 200 years later. St. Elmo, Colorado was a hustling and bustling place, at least in the late 1800s. But since the mines shut down, well, it just hasn't been the same. Today, many visitors claim to witness Annabelle Stark, a woman who refused to leave after the town shut down, still wandering the streets of the desolate locale. Old Newgate Prison was the first prison in the state of Connecticut. It closed in 1827, but its main purpose when it was still in use was to house revolutionary POWs. It's said that their screams and calls for help can still be heard to this day. Fort Delaware is located on its own island, accessible only by ferry. It was built as a Union fortress during the Civil War. During the numerous altercations that took place in the prison, countless soldiers and captors were killed. It is said that they are still on the premises to this day. Old St. John's County Jail might no longer house prisoners physically. It's been converted into a historical museum. However, it has been said that the spirits of many former inmates have been spotted by visitors during the museum's nighttime ghost and gravestones walking tour. Imagine being alone in the Lucas Theater in Savannah, Georgia, and cleaning up after a show. You suddenly hear uproarious applause and turn in panic to find the source. But the entire theater auditorium is empty. This has been the experience of quite a few employees of the notoriously haunted local theater. The Iolani Palace was once home to Hawaii's royalty. However, it has since been converted into a museum in order to accurately preserve Hawaiian history. Well, in addition to its historic value, the palace also boasts numerous sightings of Queen Lilio Kolani and quite a few other Hawaiian royals. The old Idaho penitentiary was notorious for housing some of the most dangerous criminals in the history of the state. For over 100 years, felons were sentenced to hard labor within its walls. However, in 1973, the penitentiary was permanently closed. Numerous residents of Boise have since claimed to bear witness to sightings of ghostly apparitions, some reenacting failed escape attempts. The Congress Plaza Hotel in Chicago, Illinois, is one of the most haunted destinations within the state. There are too many ghosts even to name. A few of the most famous ones, however, include sightings of Al Capone, President Theodore Roosevelt, and the famed serial killer H.H. H. Holmes. Today, the building known as the Indiana Medical History Museum is one of the most haunted museums in the whole country. Why? Because it's built on a ground that once housed a place known as the Central State Hospital. It's said that many cruel and unusual medical procedures were carried out on patients there, and that many of them still wander the halls to this day. The Velissa Axe Murder House derives from the name of the tragic unsolved murder case that took place there in 1912. 
when six family members and a friend were horrifically slain by an unknown axe-wielding assailant. The perpetrator was never caught, but people who have toured the house since have frequently claimed to see paranormal happenings there. The Stoll Cemetery, located just outside of Lawrence, Kansas, is allegedly a literal portal to hell. Locals believe seven otherworldly gateways overlap there and provide evil spirits entry into the afterlife. The Waverly Hills Sanatorium was one of the most cruelly run mental health facilities of the 1800s. At its peak, it purportedly housed a shockingly 400 patients. The mistreatment and abuse of these individuals spawned numerous urban legends that many Louisville locals take as fact. The St. Louis Cemetery in New Orleans, Louisiana supposedly houses the ghost of a voodoo priestess. Marie Laveau died in 1881. But horrific tales of her spirit returning from beyond the grave to terrorize the grounds of the cemetery are taken to be true by all who inhabit the area. Wood Island Lighthouse is one of the most beautiful lighthouses on the main coastline. However, it also has the distinct honor of being one of the most haunted. It is said that the ghosts of former lighthouse keepers can be seen in the tower late at night. Antietam National Battlefield in Washington Country was the site of one of the most bloodiest battles of the Civil War. Many have witnessed legions of ghostly soldiers calling out for help in the wee hours of the morning. Unfortunately, these poor souls, trapped between life and death, may never truly find peace. The Mount in Lennox is the historic estate of acclaimed writer Edith Wharton. It's purportedly haunted by her ghost to this day. The Detroit Masonic Temple is said to be haunted by George D. Mason, one of the architects of the building. It's said that he's often spotted wandering through many of the hundreds of rooms. The Fitzgerald Theater in St. Paul, Minnesota is one of the oldest operating theaters in the city. It also has numerous ghosts from productions gone awry. One ghost, named Ben, was a stagehand who fell in love with an actor, and after she broke his heart, committed suicide. Some say he's been doomed to wander the facility for all of eternity. The King's Tavern in Natchez, Mississippi, is home to one of the area's most gruesome ghost stories. The mistress of the tavern's original owner is said to have been murdered there in her sleep, and she now haunts the venue forevermore. The Missouri governor's mansion in Jefferson City has a startling ghost story associated with it. In 1882, the governor's daughter, Carrie, passed away prematurely of diphtheria. Years later, during renovation, both construction workers and townspeople claimed to have witnessed Carrie playing in the attic and floating down the stairs. Dally Mansion, now a beloved wedding venue, has a long history with the paranormal. Many visitors there have witnessed astral apparitions, picture frames floating in mid-air, disembodied voices calling out to them from the great beyond. Bull Cemetery in Springfield, Nebraska is said to be home to many ghostly visitors. The two most commonly cited are a tall, angry man who kicks over gravestones in the dead of night, and a woman named Mary Mumford who is constantly cited as chasing visitors. The Bowers Mansion in Washoe City, Nevada has many years of paranormal activity to its name. The home used to belong to local millionaires Ellie and Sandy Bowers. But after Sandy passed away, his wife became obsessed with holding seances, which apparently permanently altered the spiritual equilibrium around the estate. Alton Town Hall in Alton, New Hampshire is one of the few haunted government buildings. Many individuals have witnessed furniture floating, papers disappearing, and strange noises. Pine Barrens, New Jersey is home to all sorts of ghosts and ghouls, the most famous of which is the iconic Jersey Devil. According to local folklore, the 13th child of a woman named Deborah Leeds was offered to the devil while she was pregnant in 1735. After the child had been born, it developed talons, horns, and wings. It then killed his mother, siblings, and the midwife who delivered it before disappearing into the darkness of the night. If you're ever in the Luna Mansion near Albuquerque, New Mexico, and you meet a woman named Josefina, it might be in your best interest to avoid interacting with her. Josefina is not the kind groundskeeper she pretends to be. Rather, she's a long dead resident of the area who was obsessed with the mansion while she was alive. New York's entry into the long list of rundown psychiatric facilities littered across the country is Letchworth Village. Like many other dilapidated mental health facilities, Letchworth has a long list of ghostly visitors that the still living have seen strolling the grounds. Theodosia Burr, the daughter of the founding father Aaron Burr, is believed to haunt the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. A ship she was aboard crashed there in 1812, and her spirit has allegedly never left. Many visitors to Fort Abraham Lincoln in North Dakota have claimed to spot the ghost of George Armstrong Custer and his wife, 
who both died four years after the fort was constructed. The currently decommissioned Moonville Tunnel is a favorite spot amongst both explorers and ghost hunters who are located in the Ohio area. The tunnel was previously used as a local railway, but since it has fallen into disuse, many long-dead engineers and railroad operators have been seen listlessly wandering through its darkened interior. The Skirvin Hilton Hotel has stood in the Oklahoma City area for decades. The primary ghost that has been repeatedly spotted in the hotel is a woman named Effie, who died there in the 1800s. The Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, Oregon, got their name from the early 19th century practice of Shanghai, in which sailors would be kidnapped, shipped to East Asia, and forced to work on shipping vessels. The tunnels were used to ferry these unwilling men into a life of forced servitude. It's said that the victims of the Shanghai Tunnels can still be seen by the stray tourist, even now. Easter State Penitentiary in Philadelphia, like many of the locations featured on this list, has plenty of famous ghosts still haunting its walls. Al Capone and notorious bank robber Slick Willie being two of the most popular ones. The Breakers in Newport, Rhode Island is a sprawling mansion that's so famous, it's been turned into a museum. Alice Vanderbilt, the matriarch of the egregiously wealthy Vanderbilt family, lived in the mansion for many years. Her ghost is said to haunt it to this day. Poinsett Bridge in Greenville is the state's oldest bridge. It's also said to be haunted by quite a few ghosts, largely due to an accident during construction that resulted in a man being entombed within the bridge's structure. The Bullock Hotel in Deadwood, South Dakota is said to be haunted by its original owner, Seth Bullock. He's a gruff man with a large mustache who is usually spotted on the second floor landing, cleaning or working late into the night. Memphis's most haunted location is the Orpheum Theater, a little girl named Mary is one of the six ghosts that linger in the lobby between shows. Many theater goers have also seen her in the wings just as the show's end, yearning to go out on stage. Do you remember the Alamo? Well, the ghosts that died during the 1836 Battle of the Alamo sure do. Many people have witnessed them reenacting the fateful day, trapped in the never-ending loop. Hopefully, these wandering spirits will find solace they're looking for eventually, but that doesn't seem likely. The Fort Douglas Military Museum in Salt Lake City is haunted by a soldier named Klim, who died in the fort during the Civil War. Legend has it that he's preoccupied with a specific building in the museum's campus, his ghost always attempting to gain entrance and yet never succeeding. Emily's Bridge in Stowe, Vermont is haunted by a young woman named Emily, who killed herself due to an unrequited love. Her love was so strong that she still can be seen around the area, pining for her never-would-be lover. The Stonewall Jackson Memorial Cemetery, as you might imagine, is haunted to this day by the ghosts of the actual Stonewall Jackson and a legion of his Confederate soldiers. Visitors to the cemetery often see him riding a horse in the distance. The Northern State Mental Hospital in Cedra Woolley, Washington, was operational from 1912 to 1976. In the years since it's been shut down, there have been countless sightings of former patients attempting to get back into the building. They're also often seen digging in the graveyard behind the old gymnasium, attempting to find their long-lost friends who have been buried there in unmarked graves. There are many shuttered mental health facilities across the country, but one of the most haunted is the trans Allegni Lunatic Asylum. At its peak in the 1950s, it was home to over 2,500 inmates. It was closed down in 1994. Today, Many people have reported hearing a cacophony of angry spirits lurking in the shadows of the old building. The Pfister Hotel in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is the home of a recurring series of strange noises. No one knows exactly what they are or where they came from, but almost everyone who stays in the hotel has heard them. The Occidental Hotel in Buffalo, Wyoming, boasts a cavalcade of celebrity undead. Current day visitors have supposedly seen Butch Cassidy, Calamity Jane, Buffalo Bill, and even Teddy Roosevelt staying at the hotel. So, what do you think? Are there any local haunts that you'd like to add to this list? Let us know down below in the comments and subscribe to The Graveyard Shift. Check back next time, if you're brave enough, to find out what otherworldly events we'll chronicle next.